Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Ashwin Mehta, and I'm the Medical Director for Integrative Health here at the Memorial Health System. And I'm joined today by Dr. Samit Kumar, who is a clinical psychologist at the Memorial Cancer Institute with a tremendous amount of experience in grief, resilience, and, and healing compassionately. Uh, thank you, Dr. Kumar, for, uh, for, for uh, being with us today and sharing your, your infinite wisdom. Uh, please. Shed some light on, on what you've been experiencing lately. Well, I think for everybody, this is a uncharted territory on a global scale. Um, I don't think any of us were around the last time this happened in 1918, 1919, during the Spanish flu epidemic. Um, this is uncharted territory. There's a lot of very intense emotions floating around. A lot of us are experiencing the full brunt of those intense emotions. Um, some of us in the, in the memorial system we are definitely frontline. We are tip of the spear in terms of caring for our COVID patients, in terms of caring for our community and our families. I think probably the number one thing that people are, are thinking about, in addition to when can we get back to normal life, whatever normal life was before all this, is um, how do we manage day to day with what's going on? And, you know, we have a question submitted uh, that I think is perfect for you, Matt, and I think it's definitely a question whose answer I'm going to be taking on. Um, what kinds of vitamins and supplements do you recommend for handling the stress, for boosting the immune system, for really getting through this next chunk of time, however long it may be? It's a great question. Uh, thank you, Samit. You know, um, it's probably one of the more common questions I've been asked lately is, you know, what vitamins, herbs, and supplements can I, should I be taking in order to boost my immunity and, and, and help me for uh, you know help prevent me from from getting the uh, this coronavirus or or any other infection for that matter. And you know the reason for the question is because we've kind of been conditioned to believe we've been sold on this concept that that the 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 solution to all of our woes uh, and our health and happiness is neatly encapsulated in in a, in a pill that we can take in supplement form and. Uh, all will be well, uh, but it really isn't that simple. You know, instead of instead of um, you know starting with the starting the dialogue with you know vitamins and supplements, I often roll that back into nutritional practices. You know, what are you eating and drinking on a regular basis? And even we roll that back even further and talk about not just what you're eating and drinking, but when you're eating it. Uh, you know, it's interesting that that a lot of research has come out on on fasting intervals overnight and how that improves our wellness, our sleep quality, et cetera. Um, so, you know, really, really having that structured time for our meals is a really good way to anchor ourselves amid the, amid the coronavirus. So if we're at home in self-quarantine, what ends up happening is a lot of us are stress eaters, myself included. A lot of us, um, you know, eat because we're bored. Um, so, you know, when you're at home and there are an, there's an abundance of food and snacks available, there is a tendency to just constantly graze a little bit. And a lot, of, a lot of people whom I've talked to are saying, my goodness, I'm gaining so much weight in the midst of this pandemic. Well, actually structuring your nutrition and, and, and identifying those eating times where you have a set routine for when you are, you are eating your meals is actually a really good way to anchor our daily routine. So it's not just what we're eating and drinking, but when, number one. Number two, um, you know, try and identify that overnight fasting interval. The latest research shows that 13 hours or more of an overnight fasting interval actually helps improve sleep quality and can help uh, improve our immune function through glucoregulation, which is the management of blood sugar in our bodies. Um, so, so, so when we're eating is important. And then also making sure that, that, we, that we eat a plant-based anti-inflammatory, what is often known as a Mediterranean lifestyle. So if you're eating foods that are mostly plants um, and, and eating the more inflammatory foods in sparing quantities, what are those inflammatory foods? That is, you know, what, what, I, what I refer to as meat, teat, wheat, and sweet. So meat, dairy, processed grains, and sugar, refined carbohydrates, all of these things are inflammation promoting and can actually throw gasoline on the fire of the inflammatory process in the body and really you know, disrupt our immune functioning and, and weaken our immune system. So, so I, I, you know, more roots, fruits, leaves, and flowers. Roots are carrots, beets, turnips, radish, ginger, turmeric. Um, leaves are spinach, kale, green tea, 
um, and fruits to your heart's content, and flowers of the cruciferous vegetables, the broccoli, carrot, um, uh, broccoli, cauliflower, asparagus, Brussels sprouts, etc. These are the, the cruciferous vegetables. Those are also really rich in antioxidants. So when it comes to strengthening the immune system, start with roots, fruits, leaves, and flowers. And a couple of the ones I mentioned are particularly important. Turmeric has curcuminoids in it, really great in order to you know, build up your immune system. Um, green tea has, has catechins uh, and quercetin in it, really also phenomenal to build up your immune system. Um, and, and you know, if you need, if you feel like your vitamin, your, your nutrition may be deficient, uh, zinc is a good place to start. Um, you know, zinc has really nice antioxidant properties um, and is also a cofactor in, in so many uh, immune functions of our body. Um, you know, just a quick story. I had a family member who was so excited because she bought elderberry extract because she read somewhere on the internet that somehow that was going to be really good for her immune system. Well, actually, there's scientific research to suggest that elderberry extract can oftentimes increase our inflammation uh, and, our, our, and our inflammatory response. And we know that, the, that what is putting people in the hospital and on mechanical ventilators is this heightened inflammatory response. So elderberry extract supplements may not be the best idea at this time. So I'd say focus on food, get a set routine for when you're eating, um, manage, your, manage your portion sizes and quantities, um, and, and in addition, just make sure that you're eating that Mediterranean anti-inflammatory plant-based lifestyle, and we start there. Wow, that's, uh, you know, to be honest, that's not the answer I was expecting, but it's uh, an answer I'm delighted to hear. So if I can kind of sum it up in a way, the vitamins you can really put in your body are plants that you can eat, and the best supplements you can use is the timing of your food. And uh, together, I mean, I think for me personally, that's going to save me a lot of money at Whole Foods, not going through that supplement aisle, but instead spending that money, you know, with social distancing and precautions that I personally find delicious. So, you know, maybe get the carrot and not the corn dog. And, uh, you know, there's this concept that we have psychology. Um, it's not my term, but it's a term by George Bonanno. He's a researcher at Columbia University. He, he says when we're facing challenging times, like I think this qualifies as one, we have to sometimes start coping ugly, which means doing things that we wouldn't normally do. So perhaps this isn't the kind of lifestyle you would normally do. These aren't the things you would need, but we're living through reality if we're normally living through. So no better time like the present trying to change things up a bit for optimizing health. Agreed. Um, Wow. So the second question that's come up, and I, I know for me personally, it's, it's been a struggle some nights. What do you recommend for improving our sleep, getting better sleep during these challenging times that we're in? Another great question. So, you know, um, a lot of people have shared with me in clinic that they're having more vivid dreams since this pandemic began, which is really interesting because oftentimes you know, dreams are a way that our subconscious processes emotions and experiences that we that we that we uh, that occur during wakefulness. Um, so it's really important to good sleep is very important. One of the one of the one of the most surefire ways to compromise your immune functioning is to is is to be sleep deprived. Uh, you know, there have been studies on uptake of 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 uh, of immunizations. There was a study on the flu shot where, you know, they had a control group um, and, and then a sleep-deprived group, and they found that the control group, their, their ability to respond to the vaccination, their ability to form antibodies uh, to the flu virus was actually much better than the sleep-deprived group. So sleep deprivation is a form of being immunocompromised, number one. Um, number two, it's probably sleep deprivation is probably worsened by all this news. Um, you know, we, we are just, we're just flooded with all this information. Um, and, and that also is, it can, can oftentimes hamper our, our, our sleep quality. Um, you know, I found that uh, the almost daily 7 a.m. meetings, uh, conference calls that we've been having uh, have been a really pleasant way to uh, reset my circadian rhythm. Uh, because I have a tendency to be a bit uh, circadian delayed, shall we say, which is a uh, sleep medicine for I like to sleep in. <laughs> but, but, 
I, I think that get, you know getting a getting a routine established is really important. Um, and starting from starting from your wake up time, you know, a lot of people perseverate on what time they go to bed. But actually, if you start with the with the morning routine and you start from that time and work your way backwards, um, also know that there are physiologically long and short sleepers. Some people need more sleep and some people require less sleep and can get away with it and function perfectly normally. So there isn't really a set number of hours for everybody in terms of, you know, how much sleep should you get. I also would recommend, you know, staying away from, from uh, caffeine as well as possible. Um, you know, just, just limiting caffeine intake and being really aware of whether or not excessive caffeine consumption is actually compromising your sleep quality. Um, the other thing is, you know, these, these bright screen electronic devices. These, these technologies were actually developed to stimulate the arousal center of the brain, which is incompatible with good sleep. Um, so it really disrupts our circadian rhythm to have these bright screen electronic devices active and, you know, uh, impacting us before at bedtime. So try and put a little spacer, a little, a little period of time, for, uh, perhaps it's about an hour, uh, where, where you just have this the bedtime routine that does not include bright screen electronic devices. A bedtime routine can include journaling. It can include mindfulness meditation practices. It can include, you know, uh, herbal teas like chamomile. Um, all of these, all of these have a real uh, relaxing and anxiety reducing quality, uh, and that can be conducive to improving your sleep architecture, allowing us to transition more effectively into deeper, more restorative stages of sleep. Yeah. Very true, very true. I know I've been guilty of being glued to the TV at various times during this pandemic, and it generally doesn't help me sleep well. And uh, I think for most of us, we're, we're kind of craving information. And what I found is that after about 20 minutes of news, there's really nothing new to, to take in. And at bedtime, like you said, you're finding also that it does interfere with sleep. So to kind of respect the transition into sleeping by giving ourselves that cushion to, to rest well, right? Wow, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Um, are there any other um, closing thoughts that you have to share with people uh, today? Um, perhaps we can talk a little bit about the importance of physical activity too. A lot of us are very, very sedentary at home. Great. That's a great point. You know, and, and in fact, one of the best ways to improve sleep quality is to stay physically active. Um, you know, as kind of a bare minimum, what I've been recommending is, is what is, is based on the guidelines uh, published by the American Heart Association, which are, you know, 30 minutes of moderate intensity aerobic exercise uh, five days a week. Uh, so you get two days off. Um, and, and so, you know, with that bare minimum and moderate, moderate intensity is defined as any, any aerobic activity that, that you're breath hungry. So you're actually, if you're standing, if you're, if you're walking briskly next to somebody next to you, you have to take a deep breath in the middle of a sentence in order to, in order to, you know, catch your breath. So as long as your breath hungry, it quali qualifies it as moderate intensity exercise and 30 minutes, five days a week is, is what is recommended. And it can be, it can be walking, it can be biking, it can be, you know, a, a Zumba video. It doesn't matter what it is exactly. In fact, there's a lot of resources now that are being made available online. Um, a lot of companies are making free trial periods available, uh, 30, 60 day free trial periods available uh, where, where you can, where you can, you know, participate in the uh, uh, fitness sessions that are really great. They've got everything from city interval training, um, you know, to so many other other uh, forms of fitness and exercise that are that have been that have been really popular lately, and in fact, next week, stay tuned because we're going to be having our very own Rob Herzog, uh, who is the director of the Memorial Health and Fitness Center, um, you know, join us on this panel and 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 share some of the work that he's been doing in order to make home fitness uh, more available and accessible to those people who are staying at home and uh, self-quarantining amid this pandemic. So exercise is really important. I'm, I'm a huge advocate for yoga because yoga is not only really good uh, from, a, from, a, from, a, from a muscle tone and bone density standpoint, but it also has this, this ability uh, to, to modulate our stress hormones. So the simple practice, and this has been studied in so many, in so many research 
uh, 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 so much research has confirmed this, that yoga has a cortisol modulating effect. Um, so, you know, yoga can be really great uh, to introduce into your daily routine uh, in, order to, in order to cope with some of these stressors. And also there's a mind-body component to yoga, which is, which is phenomenal. Um, and, and I find that, that, you know, my practice is really one of my, uh, you know, most consistent uh, coping skills that I have, uh, especially during this time of crisis. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. So we'll, we'll catch up with everybody next time with Rob Herzog, and we'll talk some more about activity. And uh, thank you. Be well. Thank you, sweet. My pleasure. Take care. Bye-bye.